The second programming camp we offer this summer is called Programming Video Games with Stencil. Here you see on my screen the Stencil environment. It allows kids to build two-dimensional video games that are very graphically intensive and you can download them to your iPod or your Android device. Now, this is, these are some examples. I'm going to start by showing you the brick block example. and We're just going to play it so you can see what it looks like. So in this case, it plays in a flash window, and I have the paddle, and I can control it with the keyboard. When the ball bounces, this is like the old game Breakout, if you ever played that. It's got nice sound effects, etc. And I find it a little challenging. I feel like the ball moves too fast and the paddle's a little too small. So the first thing we would do is start off and look at how the program is built. It's got different actors, which are basically the objects of the, of the game. You've got the ball, the flash when you blow up a block, the blocks, and the paddle. And let's just suppose I want to make the paddle bigger. So I can double click my paddle and click on appearance and grab it. And you see that's what my paddle looks like, and I can edit it. And I'm just going to change the size. Instead of making it 64, I'm going to make it 100 pixels wide. And voila, it expands to a bigger size. We'll save it. Now I have a bigger paddle. And I also have to tell Stencil that my, how to react when things collide with my paddle. So you can see here under Collision, we have to set the physics of the game. So before the paddle was this big, and that was the rectangle for the collision, I'm going to delete that rectangle and create a new one that is exactly the same size as the paddle. That tells me when the ball hits this square, it's going to bounce off. So I've done that. And I also want to slow the ball down it's way too fast. So I click on the ball, and under Behaviors, I can set its attribute speed, so speed is a variable, and I can change it to, say, 10, and that will slow the ball down. And then we can test our game. And you can see that the ball is a little slower, my paddle is definitely bigger, and this should make the game a little bit easier for me. Well, <laughs> maybe not, but you get the idea. So kids can go in and edit these games of course, by the end of camp, we'll be creating our own games from scratch. The nice thing is Stencil includes this thing called Stencil Forge, where it's basically a library of different commands, different graphics, different icons, different tile sets to build your background. So you can build a very cool looking game without having to draw all the artwork yourself. So even if you're not an artist, you can build a, a very beautiful looking game with Stencil, and if we were to have built a game that worked on iOS, for example, you may recognize this game. Here it's called Catapult, and we test it on our simulator. There's the iPhone simulator, and there's the thing I want to knock down. I have a catapult. I can drag out a boulder and shoot it, and voila, I've created a game just like Angry Birds right here in Stencil. And the cool thing is I'll be able to run it on my iPhone. I can even click the home button to end the game. Um, it even has an icon. So that gives you a quick overview of Stencil. If you have a child that loves computer games, wants to be able to make their own, Stencil is an awesome way to do that. They'll learn about game physics, game design. They'll learn a little bit of coding. Um, they'll learn how to control everything and how things interact with one another. It's a lot of fun working with Stencil, and you can make some really neat stuff in a fairly short amount of time. I recommend you show this video to your kids and see what they think. I imagine they're going to think it's pretty cool and want to sign up for this camp. It's, it's a neat, neat way to get into programming.